Welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve and we're returning to coffee and kilowatts this week with the topic catching combustion. Have we finally got to a point where electric vehicles are on a par with combustion counterparts for long distance travel especially. So let's jump in, grab yourself a coffee and let's go. Okay, so this is really a follow-on from the 1,000km uh, challenge we did, which I'll put the video up in the corner here and down in the description. It's a good one, shows you how long it takes us to get across from Boston to Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, just jamming out the miles as quickly as we can with the Ionic 5's uh, fast charging speed. We still managed to do it in a very reasonable time and not far off what a combustion vehicle would do. So I'll switch to uh, the end of that journey right now, a little piece uh, afterthought that I did in the uh, Cleveland area but it kind of sums up where we were at that point and why I think we're pretty close to the uh, long distance travel being very similar whether you're in an electric vehicle or a combustion car so let's skip to that one thought to finish it off uh, as we approach 650 miles and still have 65 in the tank so to speak we could do another 50 miles on that and uh, still be in a place where we could recharge comfortably you're doing 700 miles in 11 hours based on either getting to your destination at 700 miles or another recharge stop again doing all that in a day that's a big drive day not something i would want to do too often but this is a good example of what this car can do you know if you're willing to drive another four or five hours you could definitely hit 800 900 miles in a day and not have it be uh, too onerous i'm ready to stop but uh that is a decent chunk of change for a 250 mile ev so there you go we're looking at uh, 700 miles in about half a day maybe a little more once you've charged and got back on the road um, again single driver nobody in the, else in the car and really aiming to do this as quickly as possible so i don't really mind what vehicle you're in 700 800 900 miles you're getting to a point where that's crossing you know almost a third of the country if you're in the us or canada and that's a substantial drive day in anyone's book so have we, in getting to that point, been able to catch combustion and uh, reach the parity that so many people are looking for from uh, electric vehicles? So we should start off with a qualifying uh, statement that, of course, if you're the individual road warrior who is the type of driver who likes to drive 400, 500 miles in a sitting as much as your gas tank will give you, stop just for the splash and dash, fill up and then eat your fast food, you know, on the uh, highway, EVs haven't caught up. We have to, you know, put our hands up and say, unless you're in something like a Lucid, or a very high-end uh, Tesla Model S, you're not going to be getting that 400, 500 miles in the first place. And the charging times, while quick, at 15 to 20 minutes, you know, on the trip hours, averaged 18.5 uh, minutes, even with some slowdowns. That's not as quick as a gas uh, splash and dash. You know, you can still do that in a lot of places in five to 10 minutes. So not quite there, but very close. And this is why we're having this conversation now rather than four or five years ago when we were road tripping in the Bolt because we've seen it happen in this car that we're getting very close to what we would do in a gasoline vehicle. So with that qualification out of the way, we haven't quite caught the road warriors yet. That's fine. I would still say, think about how you travel, how a lot of people travel. If you just watch people on the interstate when you get off at service, plazas the vast majority of people are not getting off the highway for a pit stop just putting gas in grabbing a snack to wolf down and hitting the highway again certainly some people do that you know but a lot of people once you have more people in the car that's more bladders on board more bio brakes rest brakes people maybe um, older need to stop more frequently um, younger same again if you have a family they're going to need to stop if you have pets the dogs need to walk get water there's a bunch of things that uh, slow people down on the road in reality that's just regardless of the drivetrain that's the reality of long distance travel as the miles pile up the stops do as well so with that being said, uh, electric vehicles start to slot into that. Uh, if you have, as we now are starting to see on the East Coast and some of the main traveled routes, and certainly out in California, if you have these locations where you can stop and do the charging whilst you're doing those breaks, you even eliminate some of those sit-down meals. Maybe you don't need to do those longer stops and you can do these 20, 25 minute stops or even less uh, in some cases. 
and uh, if you're charging at 150 kilowatts plus, those uh, brakes are going to align with the car being recharged to 80-85% and you hit the road again for another three hours of driving. You still have to certainly stop for uh, the charging, you know, that's a, a factor that's going to be the case. A lot of these cars that are in the affordable category, let's say, are 200 to 300 miles highway. And um, that means, you know, at uh, regular speeds, three hours of driving or so. And then when you've recharged to 80, 85 percent, maybe two and a half. So the driving distances are certainly a little bit smaller. But the recharge times are now kind of on par. If you think about the standard service plaza brake, at least, if you get off the interstate and then you're plugging in and doing all of your activities in an electric vehicle whilst you charge, you come back and then the car's straight back on the road. Now, assuming you can get off very quickly and uh, you don't have a whole lot of uh, what I think Eric at News Coulomb calls slop time, which is kind of gross. <laughs> But, you know, if there's not that um, extra time to get off and find the charging, um, you can get back on the highway and your charging is done whilst you're doing your break. Think about a natural gas stop, especially at service plazas, it tends to be you get off, you park up, you go into the facility, do your bathroom break, get your snacks, maybe grab food, you come back out, then you drive the car to the gas pump and there's another five holiday weekends, that kind of thing, then it could be up to 10 minutes. So you add the charging or refueling time to your stop as well as all the stuff you've done in the plaza there. In either of these cases, you're going to be doing the same things and the car is just ready when you get in. And if it's electric or you have to do your little extra stop, but it doesn't take very long to refuel in a combustion car so that could be a wash and if your stops are around that 15 to 20 minute mark then in that sense we have caught combustion with electric vehicles but let's put back on our skeptic hat and say well the range isn't uh, the same so how can we have caught combustion well you know the it the range really is two parts right it's what the car can do and what the humans inside it can do not so much what can it do at its best it's what is it going to do in reality can you drive four hours five hours without needing that rest break well if you can then you can certainly say that uh, gasoline and combustion vehicles are still you know on that uh, higher tip but again we have to go back to how many people do you have in the car what pets do you have in the car what time of day you're traveling maybe if you're driving overnight this is a realistic thing but you know a lot of times you'll hit things like traffic that slow you down so you're not really moving as quickly you're not covering those miles um, or you have a bunch of people in that do need to stop one person the driver may not need to but everybody else does so it starts to become this the reality of travel versus you know the ideal google maps if you uh everything goes smoothly and with that in mind again you know 200 250 miles is pretty much the sweet spot i would say it would be certainly nice to have this uh you know 300 400 miles so you're not needing to charge up quite as much and there are advantages of having those longer ranges but we have found we have the bolt and it wasn't really the distance that that could do that was the uh, limiting factor again as we know it was the fast charge speed so we were perfectly happy to do 200 225 miles ionic 5 only has 256 miles of epa realistically on highway speeds you're doing similar to the bolt 200 210 on a full charge so it really doesn't uh, change that dynamic for us very much the only thing that has significantly changed is that fast charging speed which is four or five times quicker so again even with the skeptics of range isn't enough i can go 400 500 miles in my uh, combustion vehicle doesn't necessarily factor into the reality of travel and how far you can go with whoever you've got in the car, however far you can go, or what kind of meal stops you're crossing as you drive. One other factor is convenience, and I think you would probably have still have to give that to combustion cars. We aren't there and to the point where you can get off at any exit and expect to find chargers freely available, plenty of stalls. Even Tesla has, you know, some of the um, problems with overcrowding on uh, busy locations, albeit much simpler routing and uh, confidence that you'll have a stall when you get there. But, you know, the uh, simple fact is that we've got a hundred years worth of gasoline infrastructure around us, pumping stations everywhere. It's not hard to find even in some of the most remote locations, whereas charging stations are still finding their place. We've got a lot of interstate routes covered. We have major cities covered quite well, but there are plenty of gaps and there's still no guarantee that you get off at an uh, interstate exit or a service plaza and there will be a charger available there for you to use.
If you think about the comparison with where we were five years ago and, uh, you know, a 2016, 2017 kind of time, the best you could do to get uh, a 250 miles of range or so was a Model S for, you know, six figures in a lot of cases. Um, the trickle down of this technology is very rapid. You know, it was only two or three years later, 2018 at that point, where you had a Model 3 capable of 250 miles or a Ball TV capable of similar for, uh, you know, that kind of $40,000 price point. So it comes down quickly and gets into the more accessible price points um, not long after. And at this point, you know, 2022 at the time of recording, we have the Lucid Air doing more than 500 miles on a charge. We have uh, te charging technology pushing 350 to 400 kilowatts for 800 volt architecture or 500 amp charging. So you're in a space where you see the cars that are that six-figure pushing six-figure mark and certainly have the latest technology. It's not unrealistic, given what we know has already happened, to have that into cars that are going to be capable of doing it. And crucially, seeing that technology that is at the kind of six-figure level going down to that forty, fifty thousand dollar mark and uh, even less as we get uh, vehicles at the thirty thousand dollar price point. Again, that's going to be the whole industry shaking out, so it's still, you know, 2025, 2026 perhaps that we can see that coming. But it shows you how quickly things are moving, how the arguments are receding that EVs don't have the range, they charge too slowly. All of the things that were maybe big arguments three or four years ago are really starting to uh, recede to points where you have to go, well, maybe they can't go quite as far, but you're talking 50 to 100 miles of difference, or they can't recharge quite as quick, but you're talking about about five minutes difference and in a lot of cases where it's uh, realistic travel it's just a wash So as always with this series, the main goal is to facilitate conversation, hear about your thoughts and your experiences, whether you're in an electric vehicle right now and uh, go on long trips very capably, whether you still think the reality of it is that it doesn't quite match up to that uh, combustion experience and you still perhaps take your second gas car for the longer trips, whether you think that charging speeds are not quite there yet for most vehicles, you know, maybe they do have it on these, uh, you know, ideal cases where you're in summer and on a road trip and the Ionic 5 or EV6 can blaze through a charging session, but what if you're in a vehicle with a bigger pack or one that tapers more quickly or any kind of number of scenarios in charging where you don't get that speed of charge that's 15 to 20 minutes, extends out to more like 30, 40 minutes. And in that case, you could certainly argue that we're not at uh, the same refueling as combustion vehicles. Uh, what year will it be there? Do you think next year is the one where we get all the influx of charging and uh, you start to see the funding getting uh, charges at every service plaza, perhaps, as we'll see in the New York Thruway? Uh, will it be 2024, 2025, as the funds kind of mature and we get to points where there are enough vehicles that can do this 300 miles uh, and charge at the kind of 150, 200 kilowatt level? to uh, make this a reality is it only really maybe at the moment a handful of cars that can do this and they're not accessible enough to say that we have effectively caught the combustion vehicle for long road trips let us know what you think down in the comments hope this one was enjoyable and we'll have a lot more to come so make sure you uh, stay subscribed click the notification bell like the video all the stuff that youtube likes you to do to remind you that the next video is coming up thanks for watching enjoy your coffee and see you in the next one cheers